I went on this hunt and I think I Googled most sexy real estate website. <laughs> and a lot of a few and I started yeah. looking. And, and, and he spent, he was like, he searched for hours, Chris. Yeah. yeah. So you do cool marketing, clever marketing, fun marketing that grows your brand and, and grows your business. But then you have, you know, quality salespeople calling the leads, calling them, you know, often calling them quickly, all yeah. those things that you guys know how to do. So I just spent the whole summer and wrote a book and I didn't realize how many other people needed help with that too. What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Broker's Desk. It's Joe Herrera and Taylor Prince coming to you from fabulous Las Vegas, Nevada. And we're joined by the man, the myth, the legend, probably Taylor and I's first real estate coach after uh, Craig Proctor. There we go. Chris Smith is with us. (laughs) So Chris, I don't know if you know this, but Taylor and I like we went, there's like a 10 year period. We never had anybody with any mm-hmm. eyeballs on our business. Mm-hmm. We, we had Craig Proctor in like 04, 05. The market crashed. We did nothing. And mm-hmm. then Taylor, how did you, Taylor, how did you find Curator? Because you're the one that kind of brought it to me. Dude, the way I found Curator is a testament to why Curator is amazing. So Joe and I did a, uh, we had a tech business and we were kind of, fully like neck deep in that. And we decided that we needed to get our real estate company back firing on all cylinders. Mm -hmm. And for some reason decided that we needed just, just a, an amazing first class, like world ending website that would attract clients. And so I went on this hunt and I think I Googled most sexy real estate website <laughs> and brought up a few and I started looking and, and, it, and he spent he was like I, he searched for hours chris yeah and uh <laughs> yeah yeah that word in joe's search bar never turns up anything good. In my search bar it leads to like like curator websites and mm-hmm. i i actually ended up on a guy named you you know dave fish remember yeah dave fish? yep ended up on his website couldn't figure out who did it at the bottom i found this like curator started googling and just Mm -hmm. ended up in your portal and uh got called from i don't even remember who but uh the rest was history yeah awesome well good to know we're ranking for the most sexy that's uh yeah exactly yeah you gotta be careful with the google autocomplete on most sexy (laughs) oh 100 percent. yeah taylor he uses that term for everything believe it or not um so what uh, to Chris, for anyone who doesn't know you, I mean, you're mm-hmm. you've, it's such an amazing career. Tell everybody kind of the the Chris Smith biography because it's, it's super interesting story. Yeah, I feel like I'm mostly well known for Curator and the Conversion Code. The Conversion Code is my best selling book. It's in seven different languages. It's been taught at Johns Hopkins. Uh, I was a guest lecturer at NYU, and it's really like a textbook of how to do, you know inbound and content marketing, but then how to kind of do outbound sales combined with that, which is really like the sweet spot. So you do cool marketing, clever marketing, fun marketing that grows your brand and and grows your business. But then you have, you know, quality salespeople calling the leads, calling them, you know, often calling them quickly, all those things that you guys know how to do. And I learned the dialing for dollars part by working for two different billionaires. I worked for a guy named Lou Perlman who discovered NSYNC and Backstreet and Brittany. Yeah. Uh, and then I worked for Dan Gilbert who started Quicken Loans and Rocket Mortgage. It used to be Quicken Loans. Now it's Rocket Mortgage. And I was just a guy in a cubicle with a headset on. And the, the two companies I worked for, they just had world-class coaching. They always used to say, yeah. you're going to learn more than you earn. And it was true. And so I took a lot of those lessons from being like an ISA, basically, is what we would call it today. And in 2015, we did our first conference and we just did a survey. It said, what do you guys want to learn while you're you're in Orlando? And lead conversion was the number one thing because curator clients were a little ahead of the curve. They were generating leads, but they really were bad on the follow-up component. So I just spent the whole summer and wrote a book and I didn't realize how many other people needed help with that too. So yeah. I, you know, I've worked for realtor.com. I've spoken at basically every major real estate conference. Uh, I've had my own book tours with like homes.com. I was working for top producer, the CRM way back in the day. And, uh, Inman news is another stop on my journey. 
I worked with Dot Loop, <laughs> you know, leading up to their <laughs> acquisition by Zillow. So I have a unique perspective working for media companies, working for technology companies, uh, and then working for like mortgage and lender companies as well. Yeah, you're like the Rick Fox of real estate. Like Rick Fox was like, he just won wherever he went, right? Like he was just stacking up championships. Um, maybe you could get your boy Lou Pearlman to get Brittany under control because her stuff's wild. Like, yeah, well, he is. He fun. passed away. He passed oh, away. Okay. He, she would not be. Uh, she is not following the conversion code. She is <laughs> no. off the rail. <laughs> well, talk about this for a second, Chris, because I think, I mean, we're not in Kansas anymore, and successful real estate agents are no longer Dorothy. Right? It's it's both. Mm -hmm. The market has changed, and what it takes from an agent to succeed in this market. Uh, you know, it reminds me of like post, like kind of end of crash, post crash, like, yes, there's opportunities. The market's a little bit unique. This is a, this is a more challenging market than a lot of agents would like. Interest mm -hmm. rates are higher than most agents would like them to be. Yeah. And so this is like the, this is the season for the conversion code. I mean, this is, yeah. your book was made for this, right? Well, when there's less at bats, you need more at bats. And so I think anybody that well, you go back to the crash when you're talking about the crash in the OOs, um, the on the back of that crash was a new opportunity with short sales, REO and foreclosures on the th this isn't really a crash. This is kind of like a roadblock. And if you think realtors don't like interest rates they don't like them because their customers don't like them you know right. i'm sitting in a house that i was considering selling and i was going to try to buy another house and just pay it in full and not even have a mortgage and when i started crunching the numbers and looking at the payment now with where i'm at versus the payment you know if i would have changed homes i i could have a bigger nicer house for less money why would i ever sell it <laughs> and move into a smaller right. house that wasn't as cool so the math is tough right now. And, and I think the challenge is that there's not that kind of asterisk of like short sales or foreclosures to get into. But what I would yeah. say would be in my experience, whether it's your CRM, whether it's your ads, whether it's your email newsletter, wh whatever that sort of tactic may be or tool, most realtors are not using them properly or to the fullest. So what I would be doing right now would be going, okay, all this stuff that I've kind of been dicking around, thrown against the wall, like double down on learning, like mm. get start getting the stuff right. Because the upside of the internet, the upside of social media, the upside of email marketing hasn't been experienced by most agents. So I do think right. that if, if you crack the conversion code now, and let's just call that doing marketing technology and sales all you know simultaneously as one the way you guys have figured out at your team i think there's a lot of opportunities that you could uncover that you didn't realize were there but i see lawn signs you know there's there's deals happening it's right. just you're gonna have to be better at follow-up than ever before you know we set appointments for agents now with our attract product the buyers still want to meet and they're still yeah. willing to talk. They're just not ready to buy and yeah. for the foreseeable future. So now all of a sudden that long-term nurture that keeping in touch and providing value over time until they do transact that got longer. Right. And so your strategies have to change a little bit. Whereas you know, I know Taylor, you guys do a great job of trying to meet with every lead. You know, why not meet with them if they want to meet? Well, your life cycle of working with a buyer in the past might have been a few weeks. You know, you like get the lead, talk to the lead, meet with the lead. You're showing the lead homes all in three day period or five day period. And now it might yeah. be three months or five months or 12 months. So it is a little scary. I mean, I, I'm not the guy that's going to come on and say, hey, just work harder. <laughs> like, it, like the math is, is tough, but at the same time, um, most agents also usually are okay with the idea of there being less agents. 
Right. So if all of the agents that are only in the industry because of the market was so great, if they all kind of get forced out, which they are, th their one deal a year, their two deals a year is now back into the into the Shark Tank for other agents yeah. to pick up as sure, well. Sure. So I would try to be optimistic, but realistic. And then I would focus on, you know, going back to square one and like really evaluating my marketing and sales processes and figuring out how they can get better. Well, so, let me ask you this, Chris. I'd love to get your reaction to, because I want to get into the future AI. Mm -hmm. I've got a question related to that. Um, I did a reel this morning where like my new thing is I get excited about something. I get to the office, I green screen it, I reels it. Mm -hmm. And it, what it was, mm -hmm. I basically said, real estate agents don't have the right to complain about interest rates if they're mm -hmm. not willing to get on the phone and talk to consumers. Like mm -hmm. there's agents who are like, interest rates suck. But mm -hmm. they're not having the required number of conversations to create the required numbers of appointments to create the retire required numbers of in person meetings to actually ever close a deal anyways. So mm -hmm. like the interest rates are irrelevant to you if you're not having conversations. Am I right? Yeah. I, well, I think it's better to, you know, prove that the interest rates are challenging. I think when you talk in general terms, it's it's really tough. If you talk about like the agent that lives across the street from me, Joe, you know, he felt, he like felt the pain of the interest rates with me personally, but he also yeah. did a good enough job having the conversations, like talking me through it, showing me a couple of homes in case I do sell my home. You know, he sort of earned my business for when my business does happen in the future. Yeah. yeah. You know, it, it may not be fun to hear that. Like when I was, when I was at Quicken Loans in 08, right when everything was crashing, every single person that I talked to had a lower interest rate than the interest rate that we had. We were at right. about 7%, right? Right kind of where it's at now. And almost every single person you would talk to was better than that. Some of them might've been better because they were in an arm, but, but mm -hmm. most of them had a 30 year fixed at like, call it five and a half. It wasn't, it wasn't crazy, like two and a half, three and a half, like, like, sure. it yeah, yeah. but what we learned very quickly is that your interest rate is irrelevant. The what's really relevant is your payment. Okay. Mm -hmm. And this is where I would really break down the math with people. If I were you guys, because if I were to sell my home and put 80% down on the next home, my payment would go down. And most people are really concerned about their payment. So there, yeah, there's a lot of people living in a home where their interest rate on that mortgage is much better, but they've also gained a lot of equity, right? Their value has gone up significantly. So it's like, yeah, you may not be able to get an interest rate anywhere near what you have now, but you actually have this $300,000 worth of equity that when applied to the payment of your next home, you're your new payment is lower than your old payment. Right. Like, like that's the kind of conversation that you have to get to. Is your new payment going to be lower than your current payment? Because if it is, then they don't care about the interest rate as much. So I, I had a question, Chris, one of the things that, um, that got us, I, I would say hooked on curator and that we've appreciated your relationship over the years so much is in real estate, there's that, uh, that vicious, well, you guys called it the vicious cycle. There was this mm -hmm. thing, but, but kind of on that same lines with the vicious cycle, there's this period of real estate where you have this uninformed optimism and you're kind of at the top of the top of the trough. And then as you get into the game, you go down and there's the informed pessimism where you realize yeah. it's not as easy as you thought it would be mm -hmm. like the leads you're getting, or, you know, the, everyone thinks the leads suck. And Joe and I went through this with our, uh, with lead gen. Like when we, when we cracked the code on how to generate leads, mm -hmm. it was the most partially informed, partially uninformed optimism moment of our lives. because We were, <laughs> we were drowning in leads. It was like a fire hose of leads. Yep. And the next part of that was the conversion. And, and for mm -hmm. agents right now in this market, we feel like leads are down. Conversions definitely down. So mm -hmm. what are the, like if you had to pick, from the conversion code, 
from mm-hmm. your book, from what you've learned from all these things that you've done, like what are the top three things right now in this market? Has it changed? Is it the same basic principles? Like what do we need to do to convert leads in this market? Yeah, it's, it's a great question. I would say that, you know, where is there the most upside thinking about tools and tech and tactics compared to where the current bar is really low. And the the first thing that comes to mind is email marketing. Most real estate agents have a terrible email or no email at all. Like if you actually become really, really good at email marketing, you're helping yourself in so many different ways. And, you know, I was inspired by sites like the hustle and like there, I do an email called the Chris list and it's C H R I S yeah. every letter is an acronym. And it, there's little places where I can kind of pitch my stuff like at the beginning and the end. But for the most part, it's a really high quality email that people look forward to getting every single week. So I would ask myself, am I sending a weekly email that's irresistible, that people love getting, that I would love getting if I had it. Because if the nurture process is going to be longer, if there's less conversions, then I need to stay in in front of people for longer. So that would be one. Another one would be text. You know, I've seen you guys do some really cool stuff with text messaging, but I think most people are still falling short where, okay, if I get less leads, but every lead I get has an accurate phone number because they come in through a text message channel. I think that's huge. And I think that the big upside is mass texting. Like I I remember Joe, when you guys did a landing page for like the daily deals, Yeah, it was just like very straightforward value proposition. If you sign up for this, we'll send you the best deals we find every single day. I think that there needs to be an SMS version of that. Like, I think if people, I think enough people are interested in good real estate deals, hot deals, you know, equity opportunities that they would definitely uh, sign up for that. And other agents might do like a community level text message, like the Avalon Park SMS club, where you get community updates, you get what's going on in the neighborhood. What's the festival down the street for Oktoberfest all about this year? You know, but you also have notable sales and listings that just hit the market because that would be relevant. Yeah. Kind of like how next door. It's almost like you want to create a next door for your SMS list. And I haven't seen, you know, we're talking about real estate agents not doing email marketing. They're definitely not doing text message marketing. They're just not. It's very new. I use a company called community.com. It's great. They do mass text. People add you to their address book. I have about 2000 people on there and the open rate, the click through rate, the reply rate, everything is better. Um, but there has to be a reason to join. And then the, the third thing that I thought of Taylor. So, you know, email marketing, SMS, and then, Mini chat, I think, is one of the most powerful tools that people don't use because yeah. mini chat starts conversations with people. You know, the idea of running a Facebook ad that goes to a landing page that asks for a bunch of information for a listing they could just go look at on Zillow, like, <laughs> not to say that ship has sailed, mm-hmm. but. The, it's the, it's it's in the harbor at least it's it's off it's off the dock it may not have sailed but it's off the dock right and i've seen you guys evolve and i think other agents maybe haven't evolved as quickly as you guys because you guys are pioneers and out front of this stuff but like having them leave a comment if they want to get the pictures and location and price or telling them text this number to get the pictures location and price send us a dm to get the pictures location right. and price like one of the big philosophies in my book is that conversations create customers. And so if I'm doing it the old school way, I'm taking them to a landing page. I'm forcing them to register for something that there's not a ton of value in because it's, it's elsewhere, everywhere on the internet, you're kind of bothering them, which is what I would call stop chasing leads, right? Start attracting (laughs) clients. So I think like calls to action that are more modern, 
you know, comment with a thumbs up emoji and we'll send you all the details, you know, text this number and we'll send you all the details. If there's less leads coming in, I need the leads to be higher quality. And I would say a lead that's having a conversation with you is higher quality. And then a lead that's texting. And then on top of all of that, Taylor, I would say the bonus one is AI. Because with ChatGPT and the ability of AI to help you with your marketing, like most real estate agents don't have a dedicated full-time marketing person. They usually leave that up to an admin and that's one of many jobs or they do it themselves. And, and I would say when you're trying to level up and you feel like, man, we got to get better at social media, we got to get better at emails, we'd never do press releases, we never do LinkedIn, right? Like whatever it may be that people are neglecting. I just think AI is that kind of companion that you've all been waiting for. So if you're yeah. good at marketing, you become great at it and you can do way more of it than pre-AI. But if you're bad at marketing or you're not doing any marketing, the ability to use ChatGPT to really level up instantly is really exciting. Mm. Well, let's talk about that for a minute. That's perfect segue because Taylor and I, I can't remember. So we had Giselle Giarte. Uh, she's a she's a marketer out of New York. You may know her. She spoke at a deal we did in uh, September. I don't remember if it was her or if it was at our Tanner event, Taylor. Somebody just said, so much of what I think it was Tanner event. So much of what real estate agents do right now to create money is mm -hmm. going to be done automatically and simply by AI. So yes. we're not removing the real estate agent from the uh, home buying process, but we're moving into a world where I could auto drop voicemails on people's phones that I type out a message. The computer then uses my voice. Say, mm -hmm. hey, what's up? It's Joe. I'm not sure if this is for you, but blah, yeah. blah, blah, right. So yeah. like, where are, where are agents, if you look forward five or 10 years, Chris, like what is the role of the real estate agent at that point? And what have we seen AI, things like chat GPT and whatever else is next do for agents where are we going to be able to kick off a robot that says, Hey, text everyone one-on-one -on -one in my ecosystem mm -hmm. and offer them, you know, a free 15 minute consultation. And then they're just creating all these conversations and setting up appointments for me. Yeah, I think that'll happen. I think the the best use case is marketing, um, and and the ability to do high quality marketing at scale. But it's so funny that you asked that because w one of the first questions I asked ChatGPT was, "Will there still be real estate agents in the year 2040?" <laughs> what did it say? Well, it was, I was like, fingers crossed as I did this. Cause obviously, <laughs> you know, I rely on there being real estate agents to make a living. Right. And right. it said, it basically said yes, because the transaction is so large and so emotional and so important that you are going to always want to have that human being to be your guide. And I think of course, like with showing homes, you know, you're going to want somebody there with you. You kind of have to have somebody there. There may be things that kind of auto unlock the door and this and that. But, you know, what I would ask myself is what can't the AI do that I can do? Mm. So ask yourself, what can it do? But ask yourself, what can it do? You know what it can't do? It can't put a Zillow t-shirt on and go knock on doors. <laughs> <laughs> Like if I was door knocking, I would have a Zillow shirt on and That's I would just say, Hey, idea. we work with Zillow. True. Right. You work with Zillow. Sure. Everybody you does work yeah. for Zillow, but you work with Zillow and we wanted to come around and see if you've checked your estimate recently, or if you, you know, wanted us to kind of update it based on any, you know, upkeep that you've done. Like, the AI is not putting on That's a Zillow such a great house. idea. Yeah. Yeah, that's such a great idea. And Taylor, everybody would Taylor's welcome a, you in. Taylor's got a Zillow tramp stamp. Taylor, show everybody even oh, where you're yeah, going. Yeah, if, I just, if I just started with that. <laughs> so that's that would be idea. something. And then, like, obviously, direct mail is very yeah. tangible. So can the AI send mail for you? It probably will be able to very soon. Like, it can yeah. create videos. It can create, like, flyers, postcards, like graphics, like it's getting really good really quickly. But it can't I can't throw a pumpkin. It can't throw a pumpkin pie Thanksgiving party. Exactly. You can't be 
and your clients a pumpkin pie. You remember Scott Mo, mm-hmm. uh, Scotty up in up in Vancouver. He delivers freaking pumpkins to like five hundred people at Halloween. AI is yeah. not going to hand them a pumpkin. Yeah, that's a great. That's a, another great example. If you've got a pickup truck with a bunch of pumpkins in the back, and you're just dropping them off strategically at different people's houses. So yeah, the yeah. human touch, uh, showing people that you care. You know, I think could be really helpful. And I don't think that it's like AI-able. Now, the AI might help you with the planning and execution of the party. Sure. Like it might help you write the invitations. It might help you write the emails versus writing the text. It might help you design the print printout that you're going to use, right? right? Things like that. But I do think that the human touch will always be there. You know, they tried to get rid of you guys, Joe, and it didn't work. Right. Zillow quit with Zillow offers. Like it failed. And there's yeah. a reason they got out of it. So like the whole like, well, realtors go away, I think is kind of at this point, the answer is just no. So Taylor, I promise, is buying some shirts right now on Amazon, some Zillow yeah. shirts because he's <laughs> he's big on this door knocking thing. Um, so Taylor though, think about that. I mean, that's such a great idea. Chris offered even just for our investment company, like having a Zillow or a Google or whatever t-shirt be like, Hey, what's up? We, you know, we work with Google, which is true. Yeah. Just curious if any of you or any of your neighbors have thought of selling and if they've used the Google, you know, home search or Google search, yeah. to find a realtor and just yeah. like, it's man, this is why I love Chris Smith. He always <laughs> thinks outside of the box. So Chris, you know, real estate agents, they're going to go mm-hmm. like, all right, cool. Chat GPT is now going to be like, like setting up date night with my wife. They're going to be just goop. They're going to geek out and they're going to go like yeah. skip the 100 level and try to go to the 500 level. Mm-hmm. What's the 100 level stuff people should be doing? Like right now, use chat GPT to help you do a couple of these things, not like fire all your staff and think that chat GPT is going to do it all. Yeah, I, I think that, well, especially at this time of the year, people start to think about like planning and like, you know, what does our business plan look like for next year? What do we want our marketing calendar to look like? You know, it's Q4, right? You're kind of closing out the year. We have the holidays and stuff, but I I would say an easy way to use it would be let it help you write your emails for Halloween, Thanksgiving and Christmas and New Year's. Like, so you go on chat GPT, you put in the yeah. prompt, like write, write an email from, mm-hmm. from me, a real estate agent to my c- customers or f- future customers, wishing them a happy Thanksgiving. Yeah. And you can add things like, um, act like a reporter from the New York times and write an email. Um, and you can use adjectives like clever, funny, witty. Uh, there's another really good prompt where you can say, uh, that barely anyone knows, you know, like kind, kind of yeah, some yeah. of those things. You can also tell it how many words that yeah. it should be. So like I'm doing an Instagram class with Jason Cassidy mm-hmm. and I said, you know, write an email inviting people to attend a master class on Instagram and make sure that you use bullet points about what they'll learn during the class. And, and, and I said 300 words and it was, it was amazing. Now it wasn't perfect. (laughs) It's like Like, 95% though, probably. Right. I mean, you probably used a lot of it. We used a lot of it. Yeah. And almost to the point, but the point would be like planning. Like I could have said, I'm teaching a master class on Instagram. What should the curriculum be? So the idea that you can do research and business plans and marketing calendars, like it actually was very humbling because the conversion code somehow is built into this thing. And I was, I did a prompt that said, create a 30 day marketing calendar following the teachings in the conversion code. And it just cranked it out like crazy. So research planning, I think that stuff typically is very boring and it knocks it out like crazy. Like um, if you want to get a better checklist of what to do when you get a listing, um, things like that. A mission, a mission statement. Mm -hmm. Exactly. That would be a good one too. You can like, if your real estate team doesn't have a mission statement, you can say, Hey, write a mission statement for the, 
the North group in Toronto, Canada, and, and then add in some prompts about like, you know, th that, that, that show that we care about our clients. Yeah. Right. 10 mission, mission statements, you know, well, give me you know, 10 almost, options. I wonder too, it's like, whenever I have to get creative and think of a mission statement or think of a cool marketing plan or come up with a, you know, with an email to promote something, there's a little bit of like, it stresses you out and you get lost. It, with the invention of ChatGBT, is there a reason that a realtor should ever be creating their own content or trying to come up with their own content? To get, is there a reason not to just plug it in and just let ChatGBT do the creative thinking and take that, just take that off our desk? Yeah, I, I think that you, you can use it to, to completely replace the sort of blinking cursor. So if you know that you want to invite people to a pumpkin pie party happening on this time at this date, and you and you you need to go write an email about that, like unless you really love writing, you should start there. And because sometimes it gives you ninety five percent, Joe, but sometimes it gives you seventy percent. Sometimes it gives you fifty percent. So the the way I would think about it is, you become an editor not a writer. So your right. new job is to put the eyes on it before it goes out. In most cases, Taylor, just being real, ChatGPT does a better job of writing than realtors does. It's, yeah, it's really good. And we actually were testing uh, an AI tool for curator for listings where you would go to the listing details page put slash AI and it would have the description. It would have the pictures. It would have the price. It would have the location. And Jimmy would send me the emails that it was writing about the listing. And he would ask me to guess if it was human AI or common. <laughs> and it was incredibly tricky to figure that out. Like you, you would have almost guessed for sure that it was written by a human with maybe some help from the AI, but it was written completely by the AI. And sure. it's gonna just keep getting smarter and faster. So I would say like, um, if you're not doing any email marketing, that's a no brainer. If you wanna do like really good email marketing and clever stuff, it helps a lot. If you're a writer and if you wanna be creative, like it's still input leads to output. So yeah. you still have to give it the creative idea to get back the marketing piece for that idea. Does that make sense? Like well, you're, still, yeah, you're still telling it what to write. And so you still have ultimately the job of coming up with clever ideas for it to work on. Um, yeah. So it's, I mean, an easy way to think of this is, I've got chicken, I've got rice, I've got some salt and pepper, yeah. I've got some ranch dressing, and I've got some cucumbers. Create a recipe for me. And exactly. it'll say, well, you can make these things, mm -hmm. and it'll give you ideas. So, Chris, I think a couple rules to live by, it sounds like. Number one, I and I said this the other day, I'm curious what you think. Mm -hmm. I don't believe, as a real estate agent now my world's a little bit different lately because of our move to real and mm -hmm. you know we're agent attraction stuff it doesn't make a lot of sense for me to post something on instagram mm -hmm. and not have an auto responder with many chat mm -hmm. like if i'm going to post anything i need to have a if somebody goes like hey joe it's great to whatever that'll either sit unresponded to because i don't babysit my own instagram mm -hmm. or there could be an auto prompt for every post i make it takes five seconds to create a Hey, if I'm running a, a webinar, it's super easy to say, like, comment down below. And then mm -hmm. rather than having to text and email and message 50 people invitations, yep. I can go into mini chat and go, hey, here's a link. I hope you choose to join us. Like, yeah. it's so easy, right? It is. Yeah. And I think that, um, you know, I've been quoted in the past as saying that automation is overrated because I think there's times where people lean on automation too much. But in that example, if what you're providing through the call to action is valuable enough for people to comment, you know, yeah, you're way better off like having many chat help you do that through DMs or through comment replies. Um, 
I can't imagine doing it any other way. I, I think if you did an A B test of like Lincoln bio versus um Oh yeah. Oh, my computer's dying. Sorry. Versus versus no, you're good. We can still hear you. So you're saying Lincoln bio change. versus comment below. Comment below is gonna win a hundred percent of the time. And and I think where, you know, like where I've I've seen this to be so true is exactly um I've gotten a lot of questions about like I've I've owned a couple of Teslas. And people are like, Do you really trust the auto uh the 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 uh, what you might call it, the auto drive. I can't remember what it's called. Mm-hmm. Um, and I was like, dude, I trust the Tesla more than I trust myself. Like when I was on the freeway, the Tesla never looks down mm-hmm. at its phone, which is not supposed to look at. The Tesla never looks at a car crash on the side of the road. The Tesla never like right. gets distracted. And I was like, I actually trust Tesla mm-hmm. more than I trust myself. And to me, that yeah. becomes then uh, I, I don't want to, I would never say someone should have one because there are Instagram accounts that like you mm-hmm. tag them in a reel and you get an auto responder back the same auto responder that everybody gets that ever mentions or comments or whatever. I do think right. that you need to take the time to be specific with your auto responders, but yeah. it seems like if you're, if you're creating content for consumers, mm-hmm. you should have like a mini chat kicked off. Um, so r- that's rule number one. Rule number two is to Taylor's point, you creating content, creating plans, mm-hmm. creating, uh, uh, checklist, creating any of that and not at least allowing chat GPT to be your admin assistant, like organizing that stuff. It seems crazy to be doing any of that without using chat GPT or whatever the product becomes to help you yep. with that content. Am I right? Yeah. It, it's almost like if you have a question about a medical thing, you should Google it and you should go to WebMD or drugs.com and you should look at the answer. Like you should do research before you buy things, right? You should read reviews before you buy things. I think that what's tricky for people is it's a change in behavior because you have to kind of put it into your new workflow to have that tab open. But yeah. it doesn't take a it doesn't take a whole lot of um, prompts to where you become a believer. Uh, you know, yeah, you once it cranks out something that you use, you probably wouldn't want to live without it. Do you? Can I switch computers real quick and then log back yeah. on? Yeah, yeah, you're good. Okay. Yep. Yeah, you're good. I'll be right back. So, so Taylor, thinking about where this stuff applies into our business. I mean, obviously, Chris is a wizard with this stuff, but but you and I need to be thinking on a regular basis. Um, you know, like how. What are your thoughts on AI as far as for the investment side of things? I mean, it seems like there's got to be some cool stuff that can come up with there, right? Yeah, definitely. I mean, the whole thing, it's its funny because my mind goes to like the Matrix and Terminator and like there's almost this fear attached right. to AI when it gets this good to where it can do so much. And you're like, dude, its it becomes who can who can understand it, who can execute on the AI, who can use it in the right way and understand it enough to to not really be controlled by AI and to be put out of business by AI, but to actually control the execution of the AI. So on the investment world, I mean, the marketing, it's all the same stuff, right? Whether it's retail or investment, it's all like the marketing piece is huge. The social media piece I think is huge. We need to be doing a lot more of that, but I think just understanding and being able to execute AI and not being afraid, afraid of it. Like that's whoever can, can, figure it out is is who's going to run the world Mm -hmm. Yeah, there was that moment when the bicycle was created and and parents were afraid that the bicycle was going to be an instrument of fornication that would lead children off into the woods (laughs) right and so because to your point our minds do go there it's like Mm -hmm. what if this thing what if we lose control and the terminator takes over and minority report and like all these things happen and i think i think it's that it's that fear that keeps people from taking action but I love what you said there, Chris. It is that intentionality just mm-hmm. to say like, all right, cool. The process is I'm teaching a class next Monday and it's on, well, actually in, in, a week from Monday, Chris, I'm teaching a class on the buyer brokerage agreement and mm-hmm. all the stuff that's coming down with NAR and like how to, how to, how to create conversations around your compensation that will enable you to protect your, 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 your commission mm-hmm. while providing great service to your clients, right? Yeah. I need to, I should probably run that through ChatGPT and say, yeah. hey, what are some of your ideas? And not just stand up there like a robot and do whatever it says, 
yeah. but use it as that sounding board to say like, oh, there's some good stuff in here. Exactly. That's that's exactly what you'll find yourself saying. There's some good stuff in here. You know, yeah. the other thing I thought of as Taylor was talking is like, interest rates aren't high for renters. There's no interest rate when you rent. And right. interest rate for commercial or investment properties have always been higher. So that would be like, if I'm really struggling and I'm trying to figure out what do I need to do in this market, you know, diversifying and starting to work with those types of people, I think is another big opportunity where, you know, normally you're too busy or you're too good to work with a renter. Well, there's going to be more renters than ever for the foreseeable future. So adding yeah. a rental division, adding an investment division, I think those are those are smart plays as well. Um, and, and you're right. The depiction of AI in the media and in films, it it does sort of ultimately always lead to the destruction. Of the <laughs> like we're all going to die. We might as well make some money with some cool stuff from AI before we do. Yeah. And I, I've always heard this where like, um, you know, Zillow, there was a lot of people that embraced it early and yeah. a lot of people that pushed back on it early. And I think ultimately the better decision would have been to work with Zillow than to fight against Zillow. Same thing with foreclosures and short sales. You know, that was a decision a lot of people didn't want to make. They didn't want to work with that kind of a deal. And a lot of agents, you know, did a ton of business on the back of that concept. So AI, in the way that I'm talking about using it, it's just helping you become a better marketer. There may right. be, and the company that, created that they are on a mission to make ai benefit all mankind you know ultimately it's going to be more of a cyborg it's it's not going to just be this computer that ruins everything it's always going to be like the, the glass eye in the human <laughs> well chris what are you working on these days uh like where can people get a little bit more chris smith in their life yeah. Well, you can always go to the conversioncode.com. If you don't have the book, you can grab that there. The new edition is on fire. It's a lot thicker than the old. Yeah. Edition. Um, you can get the audio book. You can get the hardcover. Uh, you can connect with me on Instagram. My Instagram is right there. Uh, Chris yeah. underscore S M T H. And if you love learning, like, Every time I've ever done a class, Joe, or had a conversation like this, it gets people's wheels spinning and they want to learn more. They want to go deeper. If you come to my seminar and I have an hour on stage, there's only so much I can teach in an hour. You know, we could do three hours on just Facebook ads easily. Right. You know, right. and that's really the way it should be done if you want to master it. So that's what I do in the conversion club. The conversion club is two to three hour classes taught by experts along with myself on all the different topics from the book. Email marketing, we mentioned, like there's five hours of chat GPT classes already in the, in the dashboard and it's 49 bucks per month. So it's very affordable. Love it. Well, Chris, appreciate you hopping on, man. You're, you're a wizard. You're somebody that Taylor and I have always and continue to learn so much from grateful for your being willing to share and guys connect with Chris Smith. He's, he's the best in the business when it comes to, to future forward thinking ideas, but also practical application for things you need to be doing today. And I would say that if the conversion code was relevant when it was written, mm -hmm. it has only gained more relevancy in recent years, especially recent months, as the market's been more challenging than a lot of agents would like it to be, I yeah. think now is the, the the like epitome of when agents need to be focusing on conversion. Because to your point, if there's less deals, there's going to be less leads. Mm -hmm. If there's less leads, then the leads you get and the conversations you have are that much more important. And Chris Amen. is so great at teaching that. Yeah, thank you. Thanks, buddy. guys.